All right, welcome back. It is Tuesday, Law Life Applica- Law Life Applicating Word, Daily Devotional. We're still in the book of First Peter, chapter number four, verse number ten. And today I'm reading it out of the uh, I think it's the International Version. Let me make sure. New International Version, the New International Version. And it says each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully, administering God's grace in its various forms. Using the gifts that God has given you to help and be a blessing to others. A lot of times we hear the phrase, um, I want to be blessed to be a blessing. And that holds true to many of us. It holds true to myself. I want to be blessed in, in such abundance, not just to have things, not just to show off, not to brag about it at all. That's just not my nature. My heart's desire would be blessed to the point to where I can freely be a blessing to everybody else. Automatically, most of our minds will turn to uh, some type of currency, money, money situations, things of that nature. I want to be blessed with an abundance of health to where I can do what people need to be done. I want to be blessed uh, with an abundance of wisdom and knowledge so that I can share that wisdom and knowledge with others. I have been blessed with experiences uh, so as to where somebody younger than me or somebody uh, that's not as experienced as me in a certain situation, um, I can help them through a predicament that they may be going through. So your gifts stretch far beyond uh, what money can buy. Don't limit yourself. Get this if you don't get anything else. Don't limit yourself and don't limit your abilities. Don't limit your gifts to uh, to don't don't put a price tag on it. Don't don't limit them with a price tag. What God gives you is is far more valuable than what money can buy. That is hard for this generation of people that is hard for this society of people to grasp it is hard for some of us to to uh, you know to conceive uh this type of mindset that something is actually more valuable than money because the thing is when you have money things can happen quicker you know when you when you have the money you can go out and do whatever it is you need to do go out and buy whatever it is is you need to buy But with these spiritual gifts and natural abilities, things may not turn over so fast. And so some of us would lean towards uh, having the resources rather than leaning on the source. Me personally, I would rather lean on the source than have the resources. (laughs) The choir is on Sunday and and, and they really they really they really hit the nail on the head. Uh, The song Silver and Gold. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Trust me. Every amount of silver and gold that you can get your hands on can run out. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will never expire. He will never run out. He will always be there. He will always help you. He will always aid you. He will always provide for us. And so I would rather have my relationship with my Savior uh, than to have any material uh, possessions. And so that stands true. And the Bible even teaches us that the love of money it's the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all evil, but the love of it, meaning people will go through extreme lenses, do whatever they have to do, do whatever they have to do to whoever they have to do. And, and they won't they, they lose constraint and, and they'll have no constraint when it comes to getting money. And everything that they do is geared towards getting money. They don't care who they hurt, who they kill, um, you know, who, whatever happens to anybody else. They don't care about that because of the love of money. That's what the Bible speaks of. But the love of money is the root of all evil. And God is love. God is love. And so when you place your love in a God that's loving you back, then it's it's going to be a better situation than placing your love to something that is not going to love you back. Currency will never love you. Money will never love you. I don't care if you're a millionaire, every uh, make a million dollars a day. That million dollars is never going to love you. It's probably going to cause more problems than anything else. But the love of God is permanent. The love of God is always there. You can be at the top of your game and God is going to love you. And you can be at the absolute bottom of your game and God is going to love you. And so 
in order to properly use the gifts that God has given you. Now, remember, when we're talking about gifts, um, you know, we're not talking about only spiritual gifts. We're talking about natural abilities as well. I know a lot of times in the church, when we talk about God's gifts, you know, we're talking about, you know, a lot of times the fruit of the spirit, the love, peace and joy, uh, long suffering, things of that nature. But I'm also talking about and the Bible also talks about uh, your 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 natural and physical abilities, the things that he has blessed you to be able to to physically do your natural abilities. And so to properly use these gifts to serve others, your your this is another thing that may be this is something else that may be hard to grasp, you know, with, with today's society. But you're only good for other people. You're only good for other people. Everything that God has blessed you to be able to do, it is to benefit other people. Everything what God did, he benefited us. You know, he wasn't thinking about himself, but he was doing it because of the love of his people. Amen. And so we need to grasp that understanding as well. Whatever I'm best at, I am supposed to use it to serve God and serve his people. Whatever I'm best at, I'm supposed to use it to serve God and to serve his people. And I'm talking about the abilities that God gave you, not not, you know, you manipulating what God gave you, uh, you know, for 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 self grandizement or self pleasure or thing, anything like that. And so the first thing we need to do uh, to, in order to use God's gifts properly and, and to the to the to the best of our ability and to his glory, the first thing I think we should do is to thank God for the gifts he's given us. How, when is the last time that you knew, you know, you, you were good at something, you was the bomb.com at whatever it is. And when, when, when did you stop to thank God for that ability? I mean, sure. You nurtured it. Sure. You, you, um, you matriculated through the universities. You got the education, you gained the wisdom, you gained the knowledge, but God planted that seed in you before you was conceived in your mother's womb. Amen. So whatever it is that, that you're the best at, you need to thank God for allowing you to do it. You need to thank God for making a way for you to do it. You need to thank God for the process that he took you along the way to do it. There's many things in my life right now, and I'm sure I can speak for others. There's many things in my life right now that I would not have accomplished if it wasn't for the process that God brought me through. The process was painful. The process was difficult. But there, there's that time and moment in our lives where the light comes on. There's that time and moment in our lives when something will trigger you um, to, to draw you towards uh, what you're good at. If that makes sense. There's something, I, you know, you may not be able to put your finger on it. Some of you can, some of you can. I, I really remember the day where I knew I had to get better. It's too long a story to share this morning, but I can, I can pinpoint, I don't know the date or the time or whatever, but I know where I was. I know what I was doing. I didn't even have a close relationship with God at the time. Trust me, I was more in the world than I had ever been. But God still got through to me on that day. He got through to me on that day. And I didn't change at that moment. But that seed was planted in my mind that if I didn't change, then, you know, destruction was I was I was on a, a head on a path to destruction. And so when do you thank God? When's the last time you, you have just said, thank God in prayer? You know, not just to throw your hands up. Thank you, Jesus. Praying and thanking God for that gift that you have. And after you pray and thank God for the gift that you have, you need to ask him, how can he be glorified through that gift that he has given you? How can you glorify God with the gift that you've given him? Thank him and ask him now, you know, in what ways, Lord, can I serve your people? That's where I'm losing about a bunch of people right there. Because you don't want to serve people. We, 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 we're we here for each other. Uh, like I said, I think I said it yesterday or Sunday. Paul says, you know, we are to pray for one another. We are to do for one another. That means that, you know, it's, it's, it's re reciproc reciprocating uh, the, the, 
the help is reciprocating it is going back and forth it's just not all about you you need to put yourself second and and think about what you can do to serve god through his people that's what your gift is for your gift is to serve god through his people and 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 finally i want to say i want to leave you this one you need to practice your passion practice your passion whatever it is you're good at that God has blessed you with, whatever spiritual gifts you have, practice those spiritual gifts. Whatever physical abilities you have, uh, sharpen your tools. Always be ready, always be equipped to use what God has given you for someone else. If somebody walked up to you and said, I need prayer, you won't have time to say, well, I don't really pray out loud and I don't pray for people and things of that nature. The more you pray, the easier it's going to be to pray when you're asked to pray. You know, that's in church, that's out of church, that's for your family, that's for everybody. The more I had a story to tell about that, but I don't have time. But the more you have a, a prayer life, the easier it is for you to pray. The more you use the tools that God has given you, the easier it is to use when it comes time to use it. And so I want to I want to close there and leave you there. Pray, you know, thank God for your gift. Pray. How can you use your gift to to God's glory and to serve his people and practice, practice, practice what God has given you. Eternal Father, thank you for today's devotional. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us in these three areas that we covered. Lord God, uh, I, I, I rebuke, Lord God, shyness. I, re, I rebuke hesitation. Lord God, and, and things of that nature that's stopping us from using the gift that you have given us, Lord God. Arise and let your enemies be scattered, Lord God. God, our hearts and our minds, Lord God, and bless us to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. God's will, tune in tomorrow, and we'll talk about this some more.